watching or for the first time please don't forget to subscribe like and share so thank you so much so today i'll be discussing biblically on back of time arteria anastomosis or the back of time so there are three major arterial anastomosis on the back of time so which is one is longitudinal arterial anastomosis Cruciate anastomosis and cruciatic anastomosis. Out of this uh, anastomosis, so the major one that, uh, that supply the back of the eye is the longitudinal arterial anastomosis. So, I will firstly, what's the meaning of anastomosis? So, anastomosis is a, when there is connection between two or more structures. So, for example, let me say when a woman and a man join the anastomosis together, they become a couple. So. When a husband and wife and their children anastomize together, they become nuclear family. So anastomosis is when there is a connection between two or more structures. So let me start from there. Like I want to draw the illustration for you so that you can understand better. So starting from abdominal outer. Should I clean this place? Okay. So, starting from my building out there. So, it divided into common iliac artery. Common iliac artery. So, common iliac artery further divided into external iliac and internal iliac artery. So it's further divided into external iliac artery and internal iliac artery. So when external iliac artery pass up um, below the inguinal ligament, it continues as what femoral artery. It continues as femoral artery when it passes the inguinal ligament. So this horizontal line stands for the inguinal ligament. Do you understand me? So it continues as what femoral artery. Femoral artery later continue as well as popliteal artery after passing the adductor magnus and adductor itis. So it continue as what popliteal artery. But our major concern today is the arterial anastomosis on the back of child. So we will be discussing majorly on the femoral artery and not popliteal artery today. So popliteal artery, you know this is inguinal ligament. So after external iliac artery pass below the uh, below the inguinal ligament, it continues as what well as femoral artery. So we have some branches of femoral artery. First, we have media circumflex femoral artery, and we have what we have media circumflex femoral artery. And we have lateral circumflex. We have lateral circumflex femoral artery. So we have media circumflex femoral artery. Media circumflex femoral artery. Lateral circumflex femoral artery. And we have what? Don't forget the femoral artery was the one that gave us profunda femoris artery. So all these branches I mentioned, they are branches of profunda femoris artery. So we have perforating, we have perforating branches under the uh, profunda femoris artery as well. So what are the branches I've been mentioning? Like I mentioned media circumflex femoral artery, I mentioned lateral circumflex femoral artery, 
the perforating bear shears. So we have four perforating bear shears, which is what? So this one is what is lateral circumflex femoral artery, medial circumflex femoral artery, and all this one they are what? They are the four perforating brushes. So let me start from the longitudinal arterial anastomosis. So how does it form? So longitudinal arterial anastomosis, it is formed by these four perforating branches. So that is the four perforating branches of profunda femoris that we was the one that formed the word longitudinal arterial anastomosis. That is the four perforating branches of profunda femoris that we give us what give us the longitudinal arterial anastomosis. And this longitudinal arterial anastomosis was a major blood supply on the back of tide. So, do you understand clearly about the longitudinal arterial anastomosis now? That longitudinal arterial anastomosis is formed by the four perforating branches of profunda femoris artery. So, and it's a major anastomosis for the back of tide. So, let us continue as then. The second one is cushiate anastomosis. Cushiate anastomosis, it is formed by four major structures. So, what are the structures? Don't forget, I said this one is internal, internal iliac artery, and this one is external iliac artery. So, external iliac artery further divided into femoral artery, and will then continue as popliteal artery. But this one is what internal iliac artery. So, in internal iliac artery, we have. In internal iliac artery, we have inferior gluteal artery and superior gluteal artery. What did I say? Inferior gluteal artery and superior gluteal artery. So, cushiate anastomosis is formed by the descending of inferior gluteal artery and transverse of what? Transverse of lateral circumflex femoral artery. Transverse of medial circumflex femoral artery, the descending of inferior gluteal artery, and ascending of the first perforating branches of profunda femoris artery. So, ascending of the first perforating branches of femoral artery, descending of inferior gluteal artery, transverse of medial circumflex and transverse of lateral circumflex femoral artery. Together they form what? They form cruciate anastomosis at the level at the level of lesser trochanter. So they form cruciate anastomosis, descending of inferior gluteal artery, transverse of medial circumflex femoral artery, transverse of lateral circumflex femoral artery, ascending of the first perforating branch of profunda femoris artery. Together they form what? They form cruciate. Anastomosis. Do you understand the Cushiate anastomosis very well now? So, Cushiate anastomosis is formed by four major structures. So, it is formed by descending of inferior gluteal artery, ascending of the first perforating branches of profunda femoral artery, transverse of medial circumflex femoral artery, and transverse of lateral circumflex femoral artery. Together, they form what? Together, they form cushiate anastomosis. So then, the third one is uh, trochanteric anastomosis. So it is formed by four major structures as well. So what are the structures? We have descending. We have descending. We have descending of superior gluteal artery. We have descending of inferior gluteal artery. So we have we have ascending. We have ascending of medial circumflex femoral artery, and we have ascending of this one is lateral. 
ascending of lateral circumflex femoral artery, then ascending of medial circumflex femoral artery. So to get that, they form trochanthic anastomosis. So trochanthic anastomosis situated in what in trochanthic fossa. You understand? So what are the structure? This one is what this one is trochanthic anastomosis. So the the one we mentioned, uh, we explained earlier, is cruciate anastomosis, but this one is trochanthic anastomosis. So it is also formed by four structures, don't forget the structure. So I mentioned descending of superior glottial artery, descending of inferior glottial artery, ascending of medial circumflex femoral artery, ascending of lateral circumflex femoral artery. So together they form the trochanthic anastomosis. But cruciate anastomosis, it is formed by descending of inferior gluteal artery, transverse of medial circumflex femoral artery, transverse of lateral circumflex femoral artery, ascending of the first perforating branch of profunda femoris artery. So together they form cruciate anastomosis. You understand? So this one is for, so for the cruciate. So we have descending of inferior we have descending we have descending of inferior beauty as we We have transverse of lateral circumflex femoral artery. So we have transverse of medial circumflex femoral artery. We have ascending of the force. Ascending of the force of perforating branches. So these are the structure, the first structure that form cruciate anastomosis. So I want to explain one particular thing for you. So in popliteal artery, we have a structure which is what which is superior muscular branches of popliteal artery. Superior muscular branches of popliteal artery. So, superior muscular branches of popliteal artery, it ascend, it ascend to anastomize with what? With the last perforating branches of profunda femoris artery. That is, it's anastomized with what? With the last, with the fourth. This one is the fourth, with the fourth perforating branch of femoral artery. So they anastomose together. So there is anastomosis between the superior muscular branches of popliteal artery and the last perforating branches of femoral artery. They anastomose together. Don't forget that the major arterial anastomosis that supplies the back of thigh is the longitudinal arterial anastomosis. So and it is formed by the, by the four perforating branches of femoral artery. So, longitudinal arterial anastomosis, it is formed by the four perforating branches of femoral artery and is a major artery that supplies the back of the thigh. Yes, so, these are the four structures that form the cruciate anastomosis and it is situated at the level of lesser placenta. So, these are the four structures that form the cruciate anastomosis. So, I, I want to play it to explain the trochanthic too. So for the trochanthic, so the structure that form the trochanthic anastomosis, they are what? They are descending of inferior gluteal artery. Descending of superior 
Gluteal Gluteal Acid Ascending of lateral circumference femoral artery Ascending of medial circumference femoral artery So these are the four structures that form the tracheatic anastomosis So these are the four structures that form the tracheatic anastomosis The descending of the inferior gluteal artery Descending of superior gluteal artery Ascending of lateral circumflex femoral artery Ascending of medial circumflex femoral artery So they are the four structures that form the tracheatic anastomosis Understand? So let me do a recap for you again So we explained the illustration for the arterial anastomosis on the back of thigh So it starts from the abdominal outer Divided into common iliac artery. So, common iliac artery. The common iliac artery further divided into both external iliac artery and internal iliac artery. So, external iliac artery further divided into what? Into femoral artery after passing the ingunia ligament. So, it continues as what? Femoral artery. But we have some branches on femoral artery. Femoral artery gives us profunda femoris artery. Then, profunda femoris artery gives us some branches, which is which are uh, medial circumflex femoral artery, lateral circumflex femoral artery, four perforating branches, femoral artery, and then femoral artery continues as what as popliteal artery. But the, our major concern for this topic is what is femoral artery. So, these are the branches. Of uh, profunda femoral artery, we have media circumflex femoral, we have lateral circumflex, and the four perforating branches. So, longitudinal arterial anastomosis, they are formed by the four perforating branches of femoral artery. So, longitudinal arterial anastomosis, it is formed by the four perforating branches of femoral artery. So, cushion anastomosis, it is formed, and uh, don't forget that longitudinal arterial anastomosis is a major. Anastomosis that supply the back of the thigh. So, cushion anastomosis, they are formed by the descending of inferior gluteal artery, transverse of medial circumflex femoral artery, transverse of lateral circumflex femoral artery, and ascending of the first, the first perforated branch of femoral artery. So, together they what? They form cushion anastomosis at the level of the lesser trochanter. So. Societic anastomosis, it is formed by what? It is formed by descending of superior gluteal artery, descending of inferior gluteal artery, ascending of the medial circumflex femoral artery, ascending of the lateral circumflex femoral artery. So together they form what they form trochanic anastomosis at what? At trochantic fossa. So these are the major arterial anastomosis that supply the back of the eye. So the major one is arterial, uh, longitudinal arterial anastomosis. And don't forget the last part, like the branches, a, a branch from the popliteal artery, the superior muscular branches of popliteal artery. So it's from anastomosis with the last perforating branches of femoral artery. That is the fourth perforating, uh, the fourth perforating branches of femoral artery. They anastomize together as well. So, but out of all this arterial anastomosis, the major one that supplies the back of thigh is what is the longitudinal arterial anastomosis. So, I believe you understand. So, don't forget to follow our page, subscribe, and share. So, thank you so much. See you next time.